Well, hello friends and welcome to my channel. I'm Lydia, the Halfling Seamstress. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the costume of Captain Hook. No, not that Captain Hook. No, not that one either. That Captain Hook. Killian Jones from Once Upon a Time, AKA the single hottest Captain Hook to ever grace the screen. I've been re-watching Once Upon a Time, and I will honestly say that Killian Jones is my favorite character, hands down, bar none. His character arc from the self-centered, revenge-driven villain to self-sacrificing noble hero is the best character arc of anyone on the show. He has some of the best, delightfully snarky lines, and his iconic costume is just... So to segue, last year Bernadette Banner released a tutorial on how to make an 18th century men's shirt aka a classic poofy pirate shirt. My inner 13 year old instantly went, gimme, 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 gimme. <sighs> Ta-da! This took me about 20-ish hours of hand sewing and it is easily in my top three things I've ever sewn, if not my favorite. I love how all the little details turned out, I love how it feels to wear, and I love how accurate it looks. My inner 13-year-old Pirates of the Caribbean loving self is going gaga right now. I was literally giggling while sewing this, and I just can't believe that I made this. Downside of course being my brain instantly went to every other pirate I have ever seen in my life, and now I want one in every color. I do have plans in the future to make Will Turner's wine-colored shirt from Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End, because that one was on fire. But for now, we are focusing on Killian's black pirate shirt. It was really hard to find behind the scenes photos of what it looked like without the coat and the vest, but eventually I tracked down enough info to be able to replicate it, albeit a smaller Hobbit female size version. I bought way more of this black handkerchief weight linen than I needed, because who doesn't want extra linen for more shirts? Linen wrinkles if you look at it funny, so one of the tricks to making sure you get it as smooth as possible for cutting is to not let it dry all the way after washing. I'm used to ironing white linen, so it was really cool to see how the black fabric showed every wisp of steam rising from the fabric. When making a shirt like this, you basically want to measure shoulder to shoulder with a few extra inches on either side. I went with a 38 inch width, and since I'm a hobbit, I went from selvage to selvage for the length of the shirt. That way I didn't have to make a shoulder seam, and hemming was easier too. Because this is a delicate fabric with fine threads, I used the traditional method of thread pulling to mark out where I wanted to cut. As most of the pieces of the shirt are squares or rectangles, I wanted to make sure I was cutting right on the grain. Thread pulling is kind of fun and kind of frustrating at the same time, but well worth it for those perfectly straight cutting lines. I trimmed the fluffy end bit off the selvage as that would just get in the way when hemming later on. I'm using black linen thread from Burnley and Trowbridge. I also started out waxing my thread since that helps the threads from wearing out and fraying from stitching. However, I ended up ditching the beeswax early on since it made my black shirt look like it had dandruff. I started with the gussets of the sleeves, sewing one gusset edge to one long sleeve edge. Once one side was stitched, I attached the next 90 degree angle to the other side of the sleeve. Confusing, I know, but it does make sense in the end. The point of the gusset is the most finicky, making sure the end is secured down without making the point buckle. And then I just stitch down the rest of the sleeve seam. I left a couple inches open at the bottom of the sleeve to make it easier to put on. Now for the most repetitive part about this shirt, but a crucial step that makes that epic poofiness, gathers. To make said poof, one must run little tiny gathering stitches. 
The finer the better, as it will give a more even, delicate poof. So I ran a gathering thread along the top of the sleeve, but there's also a gathering thread at the cuff end too. One thing I did differently from my first shirt was adding cuff ruffles. I cut a narrow strip 4 inches wide and 3 times longer than my desired cuff measurement. Then I did a narrow hem around 3 sides. And since the weather was so nice, I decided to take this sewing outside. I might be mostly landlocked, but I can still pretend the backyard deck is the deck of a pirate ship. And more gathers. This is the long ruffle edge that was not hemmed, which will attach to the cuff. Since the ruffle needed to be enclosed, I couldn't just fold the cuff fabric over, so I cut two separate pieces. I pinned one edge of the cuff to the ruffle, then matched the other side of the cuff to the other end of the ruffle, leaving a little overlap for seam allowance once it's turned right side out. I also matched up the cuff and ruffle centers so that I knew it would be evenly gathered all the way around. Then I just pulled the gathering threads until the ruffle fit the cuff. The ruffles get pinned down to make sure they stay in place while they're being sewn on. And then, in a slightly risky move that I'm still debating whether I'd recommend or not, I pinned on the other side of the cuff and backstitched all three layers as one. Again, risky move, but it did turn out pretty awesome. I wanted to have the sleeve seams finished before I sewed them to the body, so I snipped down one edge of the seams, folded them under, and felled them down with a whip stitch. Don't ask me how I figured out which way to fell the gussets because I don't know. I just know I did it. I also hemmed the extra inches at the bottom of the sleeve where the cuff will attach. If you've seen Bernadette's pirate shirt video, you'll know about reinforcement patches. These cute little patches add an extra layer of security everywhere there's a split in the seam, because split equals weak point. The patches take pressure off those weak points and look cute as a button to boot. Back to the cuffs. I stitched up the sides of the cuff pieces, taking care not to catch the ruffle at all. I gathered the sleeve and pinned one side to the cuff, with the cuff technically upside down, so that when I flipped the right sides out, everything would be right way up. The sleeve and cuff get back stitched together to hold it securely in place. Then I flipped the cuff, tucked under the seam allowance of the open side, and felled it down. And then I repeated everything for the other sleeve. Time to move on to the body. The goal is to have 5 to 6 inches worth of fabric on either side of the neck and gather everything else into the collar. For cutting the neck hole, I tried thread pulling, but where it was on the fabric was awkward and eventually I gave up and just cut the straightest line I could. For the center cut, however, I did pull a thread because that was a far more crucial place to get the line really straight. I also marked 6 inches from the bottom of the shirt to leave open, which makes it easier to get on and tuck in. Also, fun tip, if you're sewing outside, don't leave your metal sewing gauge out in the bright sunshine. I knew I wanted the sleeve gusset to start 3 inches from the top of the shirt, so I'd have lots of gathered goodness at the top. The rest of the sleeve is going to get gathered into that little bit at the top, which is why the gusset is on the larger size. Then it was time for long, straight back stitching up the sides of the body. I took a brief break from the body to work on the collar. The two collar pieces get stitched together on three sides. I also find securing my work on something, in this case my pants leg, works wonders for maintaining tension on the fabric and increasing sewing speed.
I learned a lot on this project. The biggest lesson being when you want 99% of your footage to be outside, you gotta work with the weather, and she can be a fickle mistress. I was all set to film some more after work one day, and no sooner had I brought the shirt out onto the deck, than I faced this. So, no sewing got done that day. Once the rain cleared up, it was back to sewing. And my least favorite part of the whole process, attaching the sleeves to the body. You have to put in the gusset first, and then gather the poof of the sleeve until it fits the remaining space. And it be fiddly. But I do have to say, I really enjoyed sewing outside with the fresh air and sunshine. It was quite relaxing. I started the sleeve by stitching the gathers into place. That way I know the most shiftable part is secure. Then I tackle the gusset. Hey look! We have a sleeve! Look at all those gathers! And look at that cuff right there! So, no project is ever without mistakes, and I realized mine when I brought it into the house and noticed that I had sewn one of my cuffs to the sleeve wrong way up. I knew this would bug the heck out of me, even if no one ever noticed it. So I made the heart-wrenching decision to unpick the ruffle and the cuff at the one end, regather the ruffle, and stitch it on the right way up. And I'm so glad I did. Chances are, no one would ever know, except the internet if I pointed it out, but I would have known, and I would not have been happy. So even if it's frustrating to have to unpick work, it will likely be worth it in the end. After the cuff fiasco, it was time to work on the neck and collar. This is the part that gave me grief with my first shirt, and I jumped right to the solution for this one. I added a small gusset on either side of the neck, which makes it sit a whole lot better than just trying to gather the neck into the collar as is. These are just two and a half inch square pieces folded in half and stitched down. The neck slit gets a narrow hem and a cute little reinforcement patch at the end. And look, more gathers! I'm running threads along the back, in between the gussets, and from the neck slit to the gusset on the front side. The collar gets folded in half and marked at the center and quarter points. Like with the cuffs, I pinned the edge of the collar to the edge of the shirt. Then I match center back to center collar and the quarter points to the middle of the neck gussets and everything gets gathered into place except for those neck gussets. The shoulder area needs to lay flat or else it hangs weird, so those gussets help everything sit better. And time for even more backstitching of gathers. Then the other side of the collar gets turned under and fell down. And then comes the long process of felling all the seams. I'll spare you many of the details as it's done in the same way as before. Trim one side, fold the other side over and in, and whip stitch it into place. The bottom six inches that I left open also gets a narrow hem, as does the very bottom of the shirt. Even though it was cut on the selvage, linen really does tend to fray, and I didn't want my shirt coming apart. Now we do the part where we turn it from a run-of-the-mill pirate shirt into Killian's pirate shirt. The buttons. I found these lovely pewter-covered buttons on Etsy, which I'll link below if anyone's interested. Then I marked one inch apart from the top of the collar to the bottom of the neckline and sewed the buttons on with doubled silk thread. I then did a basic loophole on the opposite side for fastening. I 
I made a loop just large enough for the button to fit, secured it with a little knot, and then did a basic macrame knot all the way around. There are 16 buttons down the front of Colin O'Donoghue's costume, and while I got close, I am still a hobbit and only managed 14. For the cuffs, I figured out how snug I wanted them to be and marked accordingly. X marks the spot for the button. On the other side of the cuff, I made a small cut, just large enough for the button. Then I did my best attempt at a buttonhole stitch all the way around. And with that little detail finished, my Killian Jones poofy pirate shirt is complete. Since I don't yet have a piratey brocade vest, I opted to dig an old-fashioned corset out of my closet instead. All that was left to do was go take some epic reveal shots on Georgian Bay. Remember what I said about the weather being a fickle mistress? That was the first time I attempted getting shots of the project. Fun weekend. Yeah. So, now I can say I've driven through an active tornado warning. And I mean, tornado warning. Like, start looking for flying houses and munchkins warning. That was the most insane experience I've ever had while driving, and I drove the Otaki Gorge Road in New Zealand. Anyway, thankfully, a few weeks later I found myself back up on the Bruce and was able to get awesome piratical shots. Enjoy. <laughs>